Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this series is going to be all about creating a nice and simple high-low card game in Unity and it can be used for either PC or mobile depending on your own preferences. So we'll be designing it from scratch and if you're brand new to Unity, don't worry at all. Everything here will be taught to you as you go through this series and there's a lot to learn but if you have used Unity before, you may find this a little easy, but it's always good to see tips and tricks on how things can be achieved throughout development. So the question is, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use C-sharp coding. We're going to use some textures for the visuals, and we're going to just go with the flow and build it as best we can. Now, as I said, it is simple to a degree, but you can always advance on what we learn in this series and build it bigger and better. And I always encourage that to build bigger and better from what I teach in these tutorials. So we will be going from an absolute beginner level to a standard level of development. So like I say, if you are brand new, this should be pretty interesting for you to go with. So this will work in all versions of Unity as long as you're using something from at least 2015 and that's a long way in the past now so hopefully you are using it. I will be using version 2020 in this series um, but by the time you see this there may be another version. Don't worry this will be future proofed as well as long as something drastic doesn't change within Unity and that isn't likely to happen. So when you first get Unity open you'll be presented with the hub and you can see it just behind here and I've already gone ahead and clicked on this new button up here to create a new project and you can call it anything you want right here it doesn't really matter one little bit and you can put it anywhere you want absolutely anywhere on your drive again it doesn't really matter as long as you know where it is but then again unity keeps track of it anyway now, if you don't have this option here, you may need to go to installs and add a version of Unity. So you'll be able to click add and add any version of Unity which is supported. And I do recommend going for the latest official releases rather than the pre-releases. You can see here that there are some pre-releases ahead of the version I have. They can be a little bit buggy and a little bit fiddly to play around with. So I would always recommend the latest official release. Now, when you have your project open, you will have it looking a little something like this. And it really doesn't matter whether we're in 2D or a 3D environment. It honestly doesn't matter too much because we're only going to be dealing with 2D. So theoretically, you could just have it 2D. But again, even if you have it 3D, it's not going to make much of a difference. It will still function the exact same. Now, this is the default layout for Unity itself. It may look a little daunting for new people to Unity, but there's some things on here that we don't really need to use and a couple of things that don't even really need to be here, but we can move and modify them. Now over here we have the hierarchy. The hierarchy is a nice easy way of storing game objects in a list form and we can see we're able to click them one by one here. You'll notice though as we do that it highlights here in what is called the scene view. The scene view is where we can physically see all of these objects that we have stored in our hierarchy. So you can see if we click them, we can select them here. We can also do the same here, click and select. And currently there are two game objects in our scene, which is a main camera and a directional light. Some quick tips for the scene view. We can hold down the right mouse button and we can pan around. We can hold down the middle mouse wheel and we can shift around and obviously we can also select with the left mouse button there. Next along we have the game view. The game view is a way of seeing what is physically in our game. So if we've created something in our scene we can then press play and we will see it in the game view and we can physically interact with it. So if we've got a button on our screen that we can press, we'll actually be able to press it in here. You can think of it in short terms as a way of emulating what your game is in engine rather than build the game itself. So up here, you'll notice that I did indeed press this play button and it has turned blue. That's an indication that our playability is active. So what we've built, we can physically play in the game view. Now we do have two more tabs up here. We have the asset store and the animator. I'm not going to go into them because we're not going to be using the asset store in this series and we're going to use all that assets ourselves. 
which does remind me, any assets we use throughout this video or series will be linked in the pinned comment below. So if you don't know where to get assets from, they're in the pinned comment just below. Over here, we have the inspector panel and something called navigation next to it. Now we don't need the navigation because that is just there to kind of illustrate something in just a moment. Uh, but the inspector panel is a way of storing information for each game object. So you can see here we have the directional light selected. Over here we have a transform component and a light component. So each section here is known as a component. Every game object must have at least the transform component. That determines where the object is positioned, the way it's rotated and how big or how small it is. Each object has to have that. Next one here is light. So only a light source would really have this component. You can see you can change multiple different options here specific to the light. Same applies for the camera. It has that transform component, but it also has that camera component that you can change each individual aspect. So we can add components if we ever need to by clicking on add component and we can type anything we want in there. So if we wanted to put in a collider, we could type collider and it would start bringing ones up and obviously we could click and it would add in that particular component. Now we don't really need a box collider on a main camera so we could always right click on it and then we can go remove component. Nice and simple. So this navigation tab up here is something which is used for um, artificial intelligence and moving around to a degree. We don't really need it so if we select it we want to get rid of it. What's a cool way to get rid of it? Well Trick is, all these windows can actually be moved around. So if you hold the left mouse button down and drag this out, you'll notice it becomes a separate object. You can then close it, get rid of it. And you can always bring it back as well if you want to by going to window and you've got the selection here of all these different things. And for example, that navigation one is in AI and if we click navigation, it would reappear. Another way is if we click the little dots anywhere, we can also add a tab this way. For example, we can have the animation tab. We will be using that one later on and we do already have it down here, but we will get around to that when we actually need it. Speaking of down here, what is all this? This is our project window. This is where we can store all of our assets, all of our scripts, all of our textures, all of our sounds. Everything here is stored within this section down here. Next along is the console. If we have any errors within our script, this is where it's going to end up. So if we've misspelled something in a script, don't know where the problem is, we can actually go to the console and it will tell us what the error is and where to find it. Animation, like I say, something we will use. It's a way of simply animating something within Unity. Nice, quick and easy. And if you don't have the animation tab, as I said, you can click those three dots, click on add tab and then click on animation and it will bring this panel into view. What else can we do? Well, because we're actually aiming for mobile and PC with this, I kind of want to start off by shifting how this looks visually and kind of present it in a mobile sense for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the hierarchy over here. I'm going to uncouple the game and also have it here so we can physically see what we're building in a mobile format. So in portrait mode. So let's take the hierarchy and let's move it over here. Let's take the game view and let's move it here. So now we've shifted a couple of things around and we can see things a little better. So imagine if this was the phone screen. There we go. We're ready to build it. So next, let's go to file and let's go to build settings. The build settings are a way of determining what your target platform is. And anything you build in Unity can be ported to any supported platform. So if we've got PC, UWP, iOS, Android, PS4, Xbox, and obviously as more and more uh, technology comes out, for example, now we have the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S, these will be supported, but you would just need to um, get the actual license for that. For example, if we go on PS4, we can see it doesn't cover. Um, usually you will probably have to pay for this kind of stuff, but we do things free on this channel. So I'm not going to bother with consoles or anything like that for now. We're just kind of going for PC and mobile devices. Um, so for now, let's say we're going to build for Android. Let's click on Android and let's click on switch platform. And it will take just a second to switch its target platform over. 
It's worth noting though, as soon as you do this, it may kind of freeze up just for a moment. The bigger the game, the longer it will take to switch the platform over. So just keep in mind that if you've built a massive game and you've built it for PC, but then want to make it for mobile devices, it may take a little longer than what mine has just done there. Mine was about 24, 25 seconds. So where do we go from here? Well, this is the basic layout of Unity, like I say. And what we're in here is known as a scene. And this scene comes as standard right here. So we've, it's called sample scene. We're going to stay in that scene, but let's actually save it for now. So let's go file and save. So that scene is saved no matter what. Now, I want to bring in an actual texture at some point. So I think next tutorial is going to be adding all the textures that we'll need. But for now, we need something to put that texture on. So we need to go and add in some UI elements. Let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go down to image. And you'll see a big white blob of player here and over here. And let's also go to game object UI and let's add in a raw image. Now, both of these are technically the same, but they are very different. And you're thinking, Jimmy, how can they be the same, but technically different? Well, the way they work is you can think of it as adding a sprite, in this case, on the image and adding a full blown texture onto a raw image. Now, we'll be using both of these throughout development, and it's something I know a lot of people do get mixed up and confused about as to why there are image and raw image and what the difference is. They will become apparent, especially when we start adding sprites onto these actual objects. So we can move these around like so dragging the arrows and it doesn't really matter how far they come in or out on the Z or Z axis. It's only really the X and Y that we're dealing with. Now you can create some kind of cool effects. I'm just holding control and pressing Z or Z there. It's kind of undo everything and Y to redo. So control Y to redo what you've just undone. And you can actually play around here with the rotation. You can see it rotates, but it does kind of create a unique and interesting effect over here. Now, because we are in a 3D environment, we can physically see this rotating three dimensionally. However, it isn't visible here because everything in the canvas, which is this right here, is all on a 2D scale. What is the canvas? The canvas is a way of storing all of our two dimensional UI elements. In this case, our two images. So I'm just going to set that back to zero on the rotation. And obviously it does work on all the other rotations as well. You can see there how it looks. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to set a background all the way across here. And for now, let's select the raw image. Let's click on this little icon here. This is a way of anchoring and an anchor is a way of making it fit or be specifically placed no matter what the screen size is. So if we were to select this down here, it would be to cover the entire screen, no matter how big or how small it is. So to get that fully stretched out, we just need to select left zero, top zero, right zero, bottom zero. And you can see here it is completely white, which is exactly what we want. We could also change the color to a nice dark green so we can set that there. And all I've done there is just click on this little color section here and we can change everything, even the alpha if we wanted to. So you can kind of see a faded green effect. For now, we're just going to leave it very dark green. So Next tutorial, we're going to bring in some textures and we're going to apply these textures and prepare everything for when we start using some C sharp to make things do what we want. So until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching, guys.